and joining us on this lovely Thursday evening. And I want to thank Jordana Bodding again for joining me once again. We're going to be talking about river cruising. And um, with that being said, Jordana, would you like um, to tell us all about cruising along the Mississippi River? Yes, I'll take it away. Before I dive in, um, a little bit about myself so you know where I've been. Um, I've been in the cruise industry for 23 years, and in my career, I've been on over 70 cruises, anywhere from a 30-passenger yacht to a 5,000-passenger megaship. And what I love about working for Viking is we believe a trip should be more than just a trip. We believe a trip should be a doorway to cultural incitement and personal enrichment. And we believe the best way to learn about new cultures is by the world's rivers, oceans, and now the Great Lakes. So for those of you joining today that have been on our past webinars, this is the second one Lisa and I have done together. Welcome back. For our new attendees, let me give you a brief overview of who Viking Cruises is. So we began on the uh, waters of Russia 23 years ago with our first four ships. Uh, we were delivering the most culturally enriching and engaging itineraries possible at the time. And this began the modern river cruise industry as we know it today. In 2015, we reinvented ocean cruising by offering the same destination-focused cruising we offer on the rivers, on the oceans. And this has led us to become the top-rated small ship ocean cruise line. Our ocean ships, they're small, 930 passengers. Now, after leading the river industry for two decades, reinventing ocean cruising, we are now taking our destination-focused journeys to the far reaches of the globe and close to home on the Great Lakes with Viking Expedition. So with Viking, you'll be able to explore all seven continents, 95 countries, you can visit 403 ports, uh, sail the five oceans, 20 rivers, and the five Great Lakes. Now, while much about cruising is about bigger ships and those more theme park style attractions on the ships, at Viking, we're taking a different approach by focusing on the destination and the people who live in that destination. So we've created our cruises for the curious traveler that likes traveling with like-minded people who likes to learn about the history, the culture, the architecture. You really want to get into the most intimate nuances of the destination. Our elegant ships, they have all the amenities of a fine hotel, and we sail right into the heart of the destination, allowing you more time to explore it. And as an effective operator, we'd like to pass the savings on to you. So we provide you a cruise fare with everything you need, meals, beverages. We even include free Wi-Fi on our ships, and you'll get a free shore excursion in every port of call. Now, you combine that all with our award-winning crew only having to unpack once, a Viking cruise is a great way to explore the world in comfort. So today we are exploring the mighty Mississippi. So the Mississippi is 2,300 miles long. So it starts at Minnesota's Lake Itasca and it goes all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. So these new type of cruises that we're gonna be offering is going to be a different cross country type of journey. Uh, you'll get really a chance to sail into America's heartland where you can immerse yourself in the region's rich history, the culture. Uh, the Mississippi covers 10 states and we will be taking our guests from 8 to 15 day itineraries so we will be offering five different itineraries on the Mississippi uh, two uh, three of our itineraries focus on the lower portion of the Mississippi so this is where our New Orleans southern charms our heart of the delta and our Mississippi holiday season itineraries are now this part of the Mississippi overflows with charm history and that good old-fashioned southern hospitality i love the music you got the dixieland jazz you got the gospel you got the blues and the history um, the cuisine you got that cajun that creole cuisine and that good old traditional southern flair and then we travel to the northern stretches of the mississippi so this is where our america's heartland and our america's great rivers itinerary speak uh, reach. Now, the upper Mississippi, this is where you're going to hear stories of the pioneers. You're going to get to walk the footsteps of Mark Twain, uh, learn all about the Deer family and their agriculture business. You'll hear stories. Um, you'll get a chance to dance to ragtime music, polka, Norwegian folk music. And then I cannot forget about you'll be able to sample the amazing West Conscience cheese, their craft beers, and their hearty stews. 
So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to kind of take you through a little virtual or journey. So as we're sitting at home, let's take a trip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through our America's Great River itinerary. And this is because it covers all of our ports of call. And then what you can do is you can work with Lisa afterwards and you can find the best one that meets your needs. So let's dive in. So this itinerary uh, it is 15 days. We start in St. Paul and we go all the way down to New Orleans. So you're going to arrive in St. Paul on day one. So after boarding, depending on what type of time your flight arrives, you can relax on board the ship or go explore the city. Now, the Twin Cities, they have a lot to explore. So St. Paul has these really unique, distinctive neighborhoods. They have world-renowned theaters, art museums. They have these really great edgy breweries and great music venues. So when you arrive, our ship is going to depart this evening. So if you fly in the day you're going to depart, you're going to miss out on St. Paul. So one of the things I recommend to do is work with Lisa and maybe come in a day before so you can really experience the city. Now, when you are there, we have a program director on board of the ship. So they are also there to assist with anything you need. So if you need a map, directions, any must-see highlights that you want recommendations on, they're there on board the ship. So we are sailing this night because day two, we got to make it to our next stop. And we are on our way to Red Wing, Minnesota. So what's going to happen is in the morning, we're going to enjoy a little scenic sailing down this part of the Mississippi into Red Wing. Now, Red Wing, what is it known for? Well, the American-made Red Wing shoes. So uh, they were the shoes the soldiers wore in actually both of the wars. Now, the town got its name after a Sioux chief. Uh, the first settlers arrived there in 1800s, and the chief, of course, wore a of course, a red wing feather. So that is how the town got its name. Now today our tour will take you through, you'll get to learn about the fascinating history. And then we're gonna go to the National Eagle Center, which is nearby in uh, Wabasha. Now the upper, and I just learned about this. So the upper Mississippi Valley is home to hundreds and hundreds of bald eagles. And they all build their nests all along the Mississippi River. So as we're sailing, you're going to get a chance to see all of their nests, all of the bald eagles. And then when we arrive in the center, they will let you know about it. Uh, the center has been around since 1983. So, of course, they take in a lot of eagles that uh, can't be out in the wild anymore. Uh, they rescue a lot of different eagles. So as you go through the visit, it's a really interactive visit where you can get up close and you can learn more about them through the interactive uh, visit. Now, after we visit Red Wing, I love Red Wing, we're on our way to La Crosse. So La Crosse, Wisconsin, the first Europeans to settle here were the French fur traders. And they traveled along the Mississippi during the late 17th century. And there is actually in La Crosse, numerous of sites that are national registered historic places. So when you're going through La Crosse, it's like an outdoor museum. So after breakfast, what's gonna happen is our included tour is going to take you on a panoramic tour. Well, you'll get to see all the architectural landmarks around the city. Um, you'll get to see an array of statues all along the riverfront. We will make our way downtown where we'll stop at St. Rose Convent. Now, this convent is beautiful. You'll get to see the lovely Mary of Angels Chapel. And you can kind of see it here. They have 100 stunning stained glass windows throughout the chapel. Now, our tour is going to end here today. And this is right in the downtown area. So you have a choice. And you can go back to the ship and depart back from the ship with the crew, or you can just stay downtown at this point, which I usually like to do. Then you can go wander around. There's tons of different houses, beautifully architecturally interesting buildings. Now, we'll have to have everybody back on board the ship for dinner so we can start sailing to the next stop, which is... Dubuque, Iowa. So this city proudly claims of where Iowa started. That's their, their claim to flame. So today, this is an interesting day because you get a chance to learn all about the steamboat era at the National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium. So they actually have an aquarium in there as well. But the museum is home to all of these incredible exhibits that talk about the amazing culture and the history along the Mississippi. Um, the aquarium, of course, has a different wildlife that is featured along the Mississippi. Now, we will then, after the museum, we will step back into time before the Civil War when Dubuque was a booming river town with these opulent houses and lots of money thrown in. So we are going to get to see the opulent Mathis Ham House. 
So Mr. Matheson, he was a miner, and he was actually a really successful shipping business, lumber and architecture he was in. Now, he built this huge Victorian-style mansion on a bluff, so it overlooks the Mississippi. So he can sit from his front porch there and see the Mississippi. Now, this is where he used to watch the ships coming in and out. And he would actually warn everybody when he would see pirate ships coming into the Mississippi. So during your visit, your guide will tell you all the stories about what he used to do. And you will find out if the pirates ever found out if Mr. Mathis, Mr. Ham, I'm sorry, was the gentleman that ratted them out coming into the water. So it's an interesting story. Um, you'll see if they have their revenge or not. And there's a lot of fun history as you're going through. Now, our included tour will end here. You will have plenty of time to explore Dubuque on your own. Now, this is a place for my architectural lovers on the webinar today because we have an additional excursion. So not only do we have optional excursions, I mean included excursions, we have optional excursions. And what's great about these is you can look through them with Lisa before you leave. She can pre-book them for you and um, make sure that you get them. But this is exciting because um, Frank Lloyd Wright, of course, this is his Tally Essen. Uh, so for my architectural lovers, you will get a chance to go to this incredible house and you will learn how Wright influenced the 20th century architecture. So you'll get to explore the main building. Um, and there's actually other sites on the ground that Wright designed. Uh, we will have lunch here in this included tour, which will be a regional cooking demonstration. And you will actually see a performance. He has a hillside theater on this property as well. So we'll have a performance there. So anybody on the call today who appreciates architecture, this is a must see on your list. All right, day five. Today begins with a visit to the John Deere Pavilion. Now, you will get to see the celebration uh, of past, present, and future agriculture business. And you will get a chance to tour the Deere family homes. Now, if this doesn't interest you, you might want to explore a different opportunity. Uh, we do have a chance where you can actually get a more in-depth tour of the deer homes, but we have an optional excursion, and this is great for my garden lovers because the Quad City Botanical Garden is stunning. So it's inspired by a Hawaiian island. So it's an indoor-outdoor garden that includes stunning 14-foot waterfalls. They have this giant rainforest, reflecting pools with koi fish. So it's stunning to walk around if you're a garden lover. Now, they also have an interesting place in this botanical garden where they make chocolate, and you will learn about the history of making chocolate here. All right, we're on from day five to day six. So we're going to Burlington, Iowa. Now, Burlington is home to a numerous amount of historic buildings. It also grew popu popular during the steamboat era and the railroad. So our included tour will take you through this small town. It is your typical small town America. So you'll get a chance to peek in all the museums, the parks. You'll get to stroll along Snake Alley. Now, what is Snake Alley? This picture here, and this is the world's crookedest street. So uh, you'll get a chance to tick that off your list. We do offer an optional excursion. If you want to step back into time and go in to visit the old Fort Madison, uh, this is the Upper Mississippi oldest military garrison fort. So uh, we will bring you there. Of course, it is a living fort that brings back the fort's history in um, they recreate it. So it's a really dr a dramatic experience. Now, from there, day seven, we're into Hannibal, Missouri. Now, Hannibal, of course, known for Mark Twain. It's the birthplace of Mark Twain, and it's the settings of Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. So this is where you're going to get to hear the stories of Twain's days in Hannibal. So you'll hear all about Tom Sawyer. You'll get to hear about Huckleberry Finn, uh, Becky Thatcher, Engine Joe, and excuse me, I'm, I apologize if I'm missing anyone. Uh, so you'll get to see firsthand, of course, the sense of white washing fame. You'll also get to go to Mark Twain's boyhood home. So today it's a museum and it has an extensive collection of all of his memorabilia. Now, where the home is located, it's uh, in an area where there's actually seven different museums around it within a two-block radius. 
And you'll get a chance to go through all the different museums. And one of my favorite museums is the gallery that has Norman Rockwell paintings. So Norman Rockwell painted 15 different paintings that actually depicted the Mark Twain story. So uh, it is a great experience to really immerse yourself in the life of Mark Twain. All right, welcome to St. Louis, the gateway to the West. Uh, St. Louis has a diverse array of architectural treasures. Among them is their Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis. Inside of this basilica, they have this mosaic that has 41 million pieces. Uh, they have this beautiful Renaissance Revival City Hall and of course their stunning 19th century um, courthouse. But the most famous thing, we all know it, it's the Gateway Arch, the world's tallest arch. And so it's a beautiful arch. This is the Gateway Park that we're looking at. And right that, that building that we're looking at right underneath the arch is actually the museum. And this Gateway Museum covers 200 years of history of the westward expansion of the United States. And of course, it emphasizes a lot of St. Louis's role in that area as well. Now, when I went to St. Louis, I was only there for 24 hours, and I promised myself I would stay longer the next time I visit, because the hospitality of the Midwest gets me every single time. The food, the people are just amazing. Uh, after I left, there, there were so many things I wish I visited. There is the Budweiser tour. Um, of course, they have the St. Louis Art Museum and the incredible... Um, famous, uh, oh, I mentioned the Budweiser tour, so you get a chance to go see the incredible famous Budweiser uh, prize bills. All right, so day nine, we had a, we had a busy eight days, haven't we, so far? So this is the time you're going to get a chance to relax. So day nine, uh, this part of the Mississippi is like a serpentine route. So it's going to weave in out through the Mississippi, and you're going to see these stunning landscapes. So we're going to sail by deep forest, lush vegetation, um, patchwork of farm, fertile farmlands. Um, as we're going, there is going to be a ton of wildlife you're going to see along the shoreline. So on board the Mississippi ship, we have a lot of outdoor spaces. We actually like to bring the light in, so we have a lot of windows in a lot of our public areas. So this one we're looking at here, this is our bow at the front of the ship. So you can actually relax in those comfy chairs and just really enjoy the scenery as we go on our day. Now, while we're at, um, while we're cruising on board the ship, we bring on different lectures that will talk about the history of the region that we're sailing in. We have different events going on on board, cooking classes, tasting, so you won't get bored on board the ship. All right, day 10, thank goodness you rest because day 10, we're in Memphis, Queen City of the South. This is the birthplace of the Memphis News, a popular in vaudeville shows in the earliest 20th century. Actually, President Andrew Jackson co-founded the city in 1819. So with its strong trade in the agriculture business, and other natural resources, this is actually one of the South's largest commercial areas. But Memphis, it's known for its music scene, its cuisine, and the character of Beale Street. And this is what you're going to have to experience. Beale Street is two miles long, and it's the renowned intersection of American blues. You got country also, gospel, and I can't forget rock and roll. So some of my favorite idols in the music industry have played here. Louis Armstrong, Muddy Waters, you got Albert King, Memphis Minnie, B.B. King, Rufus Thomas, and there's so many more. Um, uh, Elvis Presley, I can keep going on and on. So you can really immerse yourself in the music uh, life here. And our included tour will take you. When you are in Memphis, though, you're going to have a chance to relax after Beale Street Mutants, and you will have to, I promise, try out the barbecue because Tennessee has some of the best barbecue. And there's actually a rule. Uh, one of the things, maybe in St. Louis, you should try out the St. Louis versus the Memphis barbecue because there's a difference. Because in Memphis, they dry smoke their meat, and they actually rub the spice on to focus on the flavor. And they serve their sauce on the side, and they manually put on the sauce. What, compared to St. Louis, where they um, make their ribs and sauce. So you'll get a chance to learn about, of course, the ribs. And then, well, Memphis, come on. It, my Elvis fans, I know you're on here. Um, you're going to have to make your way, of course. The pr Pilgrims to Graceland is a must. This is the legendary home of Elvis Presley, and it's filled with his memorabilia. Uh, the moment you step through the incredible sheet music shapes, uh, wrought iron gates that he has, 
you will find yourself immersed in Elvis's life from 1957 to 77. So this is an optional tour. So if you're an Elvis fan and it's one of these tours that might fill out quickly. So this is the key why you work with a travel agent because Lisa already knows this stuff. So she can tell you this before you even leave. All right. So day 11, this is another scenic day. So you're going to get another full day uh, on board the ship. Again, we're going to immerse ourselves in the region's history. Uh, we have a library on board. You might want to relax, read a book, um, attend one of our many lectures on board of the ship. Uh, day 12, well, we're going to arrive into Vicksburg. And the minute we arrive into Vicksburg, you're going to feel that Southern tradition because it flows right through the city's veins. It's, of course, rich in history, that Civil War history. During Civil War, Abraham Lincoln called Vicksburg the key to the South. And it did prove to be because one of the most pivotal battles was the Battle of Vicksburg. So what we're going to do is take you to the National Park. And a park ranger is really going to narrow right what it was like on the battlefield of the Battle of Vicksburg. So you'll get a chance to see the trenches, the markers, the monuments. You'll get a chance to peruse all of the exhibits in the visitor center and learn about how the battle really impacted the lives of the civilian and the troops on both sides. Also, we include a tour to the USS Cairo. Now, this was the ironclad gunboat that actually uh, prowled the Mississippi River. So, um, You'll get it, and you'll really get a step back in the time of Civil War history in Vicksburg. Now, day 13, we're in Naj, Naj Chaz. Now, Naj Chaz is another great uh, small town America. Now, pre Civil War, Naj Chaz, there was a lot of money in Naj Chaz, and there was ma mansions built in this area. And today, there's some of the most beautifully preserved homes there. So, this town actually has over 500 historic buildings in it. And they include 200 perfectly preserved homes that still grace their stunning avenues. So you'll get a chance. We'll take you through the guided tour of downtown Natchez. You'll get a chance to see the historic homes, St. Mary's Basilica, and all of the town's top sites. Now, for my food lovers, you're not going to want to enjoy an optional, unique culinary shore excursion. So after exploring this shore excursion, you'll get to see, of course, all the historic sites and the homes. But then you will get a chance to step in a beautiful home and enjoy that good old Southern hospitality at Restaurant 1818. So you'll get a chance to enjoy local food. Um, you'll get a chance to learn about all the local life at that time and sample on, of course, the historic cocktails in that era right you got the mint jim you uh mint julep sorry you got the hurricane which is well known uh the gin fizzes so uh you'll get a chance to learn all about that on this culinary tour day 14 baton rouge baton rouge is sitting on the eastern bank of the mississippi um in louisiana and today this is this is the cajun people left an incredible mark in this area and they're hardworking, fun-loving people, and they have huge contributions to the Louisiana history. And today you get to learn all about that in our included panoramic tour. You'll also get to learn about, of course, some more War World II history. Um, the USS Kidd is actually docked just right outside of Baton Rouge. It's the downtown area of Baton Rouge. And what it is, it's the Fletcher Class Destroyer, and it was restored to exact configuration as it was in World War II. So you'll get a chance to step on the USS Kid, and it is home to the Veterans Museum. So you will get a chance to really get a glimpse into the intimate life on board of the people who served her. So uh, that is day 14 in Baton Rouge. Day 15, well, day 15 is the day you're going to have to say goodbye. So after breakfast, you're going to have to say goodbye to your newfound friends. You're going to have to say goodbye to our amazing crew and disembark the Mississippi. Now, if you are scheduled to return home, you're going to miss out on one of the most amazing, intriguing cities, I think, in the South. And that is the big easy. Now, New Orleans has this incredible blend of that Cajun, Creole, French culture. It is home. I have to say to some of the finest world cuisine I've had, um, they have warring jazz clubs, they have these incredible historic neighborhoods and a nonstop festive atmosphere going throughout the city. Now there's so much to experience, like they have the world-class National World War II Museum, they have incredible art galleries, antique shops, 
and of course, the legendary French Quarter. Now, when we talk about New Orleans, people think about the historic French Quarter. And usually two things come to mind, and if you were on early enough, you probably heard Lisa and I talking about it when you think about the French Quarter, is Bourbon Street, music, partying, young. Um, those are fun, don't get me wrong, it's a lot of fun after dark, but there is so much to do in the French Quarter. There is so much history in the French Quarter. Uh, the streets are incredible to walk around. They're filled with these grill houses uh, with their wrought iron balconies, and they're lined with incredible antique shops, art gallery, restaurants. Now, what's unique is they have a plenty of different walking tours in New Orleans. So depending what's your poison, you can do a walking tour about architecture, you can do a ghost walking tour. Uh, they have the star home walking tour through the French Quarter, uh, the music walking tour. So you name it, whatever your poison is, you can find a walking tour through the French Quarter. Now, the other place we have to name is, and actually Lisa and I have the same picture going on right now. Um, the other place we have to see is the elegant French Quarter. So the French Quarter is stunning and it is you wouldn't be a complete trip to New Orleans without it. So this is known as the American section of town. So it was built in the 18th century to rival the architecture of the French Quarter. Now today they are home to some incredible residents like Anne Rice, Sandra Bullock, John Goodman, and more. Once again, there is tons of different walking tours. Um, if you don't want to do a guided walking tour, there's actually a ton of different apps where you can just download an app and do a walking tour, and they will tell you about the history of all the houses. But my favorite part, and where I spend a lot of time when I am in the Garden District, is the incredible Lafayette Cemetery. Now, this is one of the most filmed cemeteries in movies and TVs because it's well known for its 500 different vaulted um, uh, vaults throughout there. Um, it is rich in history. And one thing I didn't know, because um, the history of the Creole and all of that of um, New Orleans, I never really thought about the first European settlers that came here. And actually, a lot of the people that are buried in this cemetery are from Ireland and Germany. So uh, that was a little tidbit that I picked up on my last tour through there. And I was quite, it was one of those tidbits that kind of shocked me. All right, so there is plenty to see to do. So what I recommend, work with Lisa, because you will miss out on an, ex an incredible experience. I have to say, you need at least a minimum of three days in New Orleans to really experience. Now, we offer pre and post packages. So our pre and post packages, uh, if you don't want to travel on your own, these are great because they're fully guided. We have hosts on site. They're included at your four to five star hotel in the heart of the city. We include a select tour or tours, depending on the length of your excursion. Um, we include uh, transfers so you don't have to worry about how you're going to get anywhere. So if you want to do a pre, we have your chance to spend an extra night, of course, in the Twin Cities. Um, we have actually a two night or a one night so you can explore there. And then we also have two nights in the Big Easy, or if you want to go experience some of the bayou and some of the Cajun country, we have a bayou tour. So, um, and then of course we have, of course, more New Orleans, uh, one night, three nights. So we have a lot of different packages. So the key is work with Lisa. She can go through all the different packages and find the best one that suits you. So let's just do a quick overview of what we've done. So uh, we offer, the three eight days, so that focused on the lower Mississippi. So the New Orleans round trip, uh, we're usually in the lower part of the Mississippi when it is winter time, right? Uh, nobody wants to go to the lower part of the Mississippi in the summertime. So the summer months, we're in the upper part of the Mississippi. Now we start sailing in 2022 with the Viking Mississippi. Uh, Unfortunately, we are already sold out for 2022. We have limited space for 23 and we are just opening up for 24. So if this is something you are interested in, it is so important to talk to Lisa. Now, the ship, the ship is stunning. It's a brand new ship. I just mentioned that we just, the way we build ships is we build it in parts. So we've actually just built, put this ship together. She's being built in Louisiana right now. She is going to only hold 386 guests. All of our staterooms, there's 193, they're outside. Um, so what we've done is this is a state of art ship that we purposely built. So it's got a cutting edge design. As I mentioned, we have expansive windows, 
uh, comfortable amenities. And we brought in that Scandinavian design and comfort that we have on our long ships. We brought in um, all of our ships and all of our vessels. They have these beautiful spacious common areas, intimate lounges, elegant dining areas. And we've brought in some spaces that people know and love on all of our ships. So for example, we have our Explorer's Lounge. This is at the front of our ship. It's just two-story lounge, floor to ceiling windows, absolutely stunning. Um, we've also added specific things exclusive for the Mississippi. Um, on board a Viking, you're usually not gonna find a casino or a kid's pool because we're an adult only cruise line. But this is our first only ship to introduce our plunge pool. So we have an incredible plunge pool at the back of the ship. I mentioned all of our staterooms and suites. They have all the amenities of a fine hotel. We make the most out of all the passing scenery with our verandas and our French balconies. Uh, we really paid attention to the fine art of detail. We actually took the design of our ocean ships and designed our river uh, Mississippi ship to look like this. So we have luxury, luxury linens on the king size bed, multiple outlets to charge all of your gadgets to make sure they're ready for touring the next day. Um, our bathroom, stunning heated bathroom floors, floor to ceiling glass and showers. They are really a perfect retreat to relax and wake up. Now, we believe food and wine are a big part of the journey. So our highly trained chefs on board, they're really passionate about providing you a culinary rich journey. So what we do is we locally source our ingredients. So you're gonna get a chance to have authentic dishes to the region while you're on board the ship as well. So, and of course we pair it with complimentary wine, which are, it's quite nice. Now, I mentioned we're known for being the thinking person screws. So at the beginning, I said, if you are that person that wants to get into the most intimate nuances of the destination, well, every detail on board of our Viking ships has been designed to enrich and enhance your experience. I've talked about this already. We have that thoughtfully curated library that has books about the destination. We have lectures on board that talk about the history of the region. We have cooking classes. We have wine tasting. We even start inspiration before we depart. We have an online filmography that has a comprehensive list of movies, and you can find them all on Viking TV. We have different live streams, on-demand programming. Uh, we have a library that includes any short documentary you can imagine. We have lectures. Um, we have classical music, reading lists. I watch Viking TV every morning. I get lost in it. It's an incredible way to travel the world when we're not traveling. Now, I mentioned that we are pretty much sold out for Mississippi in 22. We're filling up in 23. So it's one of these products that if you really want to experience space, um, because we haven't been sailing for uh, almost two, a year and a half now, that space is filling up quick nowadays. And it's not just with biking, it's with all other travel companies. And if you really want to go on vacation in the next couple of years, I encourage you to work with Lisa. And what's great about it is all of us travel companies, especially us at Viking, we have one of the best policies that will allow you to be flexible. You can put down your deposit, uh, you can hold your stateroom, and you can cancel and change your cruise right up to 14 days prior. So you don't have to worry about what's going to happen in the future. So this will make sure you're taken care of. All right, so I'd like to thank you, Lisa, for joining, letting me join and talk to all of your clients today. I'd like to thank all of you for joining today. I love sharing uh, stories of other cultures, other destinations, and on a Viking cruise, we will deliver you to some of the most extraordinary places around the world. So I personally invite you along with the rest of the Viking crew and staff to come join us to experience them fully. Now, don't forget, if you want further information, Lisa is always there for you. Uh, do we have any questions? Do you want me to answer or anything? Um, let's just see. I'm going to stop the share right now. And, um, ah, I can't. I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. If anyone has any questions, um, you, you feel free to unmute yourself. If not, um, just feel free to uh, put any questions you may have in the chat. I'm going to put in the chat the, my general link to my Eventbrite. And the reason I'm doing that is tomorrow we're going to be, Jordana and I are going to be traveling to Transylvania, but sometime this fall, we are going to get together again and we are going to look at how Viking travels through Russia. 
and it will be spectacular. I have only heard amazing things. And one day I'll get myself on into Russia, but for now I'm going to do it virtually and that's going to happen someday in the fall. So if you haven't any questions or if something comes to mind after the fact, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to uh, respond to your answer. And if I can't answer it, I will follow up with Jordana. So um, if there are no questions, I just wanna say, Jordana, thank you so much for taking time to join us this evening. And for those that are interested in Transylvania, we're gonna be, uh, Jordana and I are gonna be back at it talking travel tomorrow morning at 11.30. So uh, everyone have a lovely evening and thank you so very much for joining us and everyone stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye everyone. Bye.